super excited about this week's top five because it is top five bad films that we actually love. I mean, you know, we have specific like, memories or different things like that. So it's going to be interesting. And I know you hate my number five, like with a passion. <laughs> it's just so funny. I think I, I like I, it so I just... much because I, I watched it when I was a kid. Number five for me goes to Batman and Robin, George Clooney. I think I like it so much because I watched it as a kid and it's very cartoony and it's very animated. And I actually like the colors were crazy as a kid. You know, you like those bright and vibrant colors. I wasn't paying attention to that man's nipples on the bat suit. I was just like paying attention to freaking like honestly poison ivy. Damn. Um, but that whole thing, like I, I like watching it because I mean, I don't watch it now because it's hard, but I, I like watching it <laughs> back then because, like I said, it was just entertaining in the most exaggerated way. Um, but it's one of those, again, a few of these on my list I can't watch now because it is bad. But that I had to put that on there because I have specific memories and childhood, you know, repertoire with it. So, yeah, number five for me, Batman and Robin. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, my, no. my Batman is dark. dark. He's always been dark. He's not neon. He's not nippled up. He's just like, I can't. I can't. I didn't say he was my Batman. I, I just, I, 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 I don't know what went wrong with Joel Schumacher. What the fuck? That guy, you look at Lost Boys, and I was so in. I'm like, if if, if Tim Burton is leaving, Joel Schumacher's our guy. It, you, you watch Lost Boys, and you think he understands this. He understands this dark, creepy bat shit, right? You, 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 you watch From Dusk Till Dawn, and, and you're like, okay, yeah, George Clooney, he gets it too. And then... Here we come. And I'm like, what the fuck, Joel Schumacher? What the fuck did you just do? I, I don't know, bro. I'm, I'm not there with you. I can't get there with you, but it's okay. My number five, and I want to clarify this. It's deemed a bad movie, but I love it. I legitimately think it's a great movie. In fact, it may be my favorite in the Star Trek franchise. I'm talking about Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. This is the one where they come back to the 80s in San Francisco in the 80s to save a pair of humpback whales and bring them back to their timeline because apparently this alien invasion comes every so often to destroy Earth. And if they don't hear from the humpback whales... They, that's, they destroy the earth. That's what's going to happen. Well, the humpback whales had become extinct and that shit was coming and they were putting out the signal waiting to hear the response from the whales and there were no fucking whales to respond. So my boy, Kirk, he's like, fuck that. Let's go get some whales. And he fucking goes back and, and he gets... But I love this because it, it's, it's right there in the 80s where the technology is starting to come. Where we're the, where it's, it's, you're right on the cusp of cell phones. You're on the cusp of being able to speak to, to tell your computer to do something by voice control, by doing these things. You're right there on the cusp, but not yet. And when they get back there, of course, they already have all that stuff. So to see them interacting with it when it's not quite there is fucking hilarious. Scotty's saying, Say, computer, throw the, and he's waiting and nothing's happening. And he's like, oh, keyboard, how primitive. And he's got to do the keyboard and shit, you know? And, and just, or not knowing how to curse. One of my favorite things in the whole thing is when Kirk's about to get hit and he walks out in front of a car and the guy's like, dumbass! And he's like, double dumbass on you! Like, no clue what it means or how to respond to it. And... <laughs> fucking Spock walking around like a fucking 70s hippie with this Vulcan robe and the headband to cover his ears and shit. It's just fucking funny. The whole thing is kind of a, a laughable. It's not some major epic oh my god, there's Klingons and there, or there's these big battle scenes. or It's just fun. They go back, they're trying to save a couple fucking whales and they're just interacting in the 80s. I thought it was funny. And the voyage home it was so poignant because me and and my best friend at the time, Derek, who's still though just I, he's a brother now. I don't refer to him as a best friend anymore. He's my brother, literally. We walked to go see this, and I, you don't understand. We walked at least ten miles to the theater, 
and it started to downpour. So it was a voyage to get there. We were fucking drenched. And when I say drenched, I mean fucking drenched. Squeaking shoes because they were filled with water. And we sat in that fucking freezing theater and watched that whole fucking thing before we had to walk our asses back home. So it's just a memory for me. And it's, it's every time it's on, I stop and watch it. I just, I do. So my number five, Star Trek. Four, the voyage home, and be nice to humpback fucking whales, okay? Fucking save the universe. Humpback fucking whales. That's really the takeaway from it. Just be nice. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, number four for me goes to Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh. The Last Action Hero. I This one I still go back and watch, but it's hard. Um, his acting wasn't necessarily top tier then. I mean, did it ever really get there? But it's fine. <laughs> I still love Arnold. Um, it's a, like, I mean, it's really cool because this kid gets sucked into a movie, basically a movie universe. And to be able to, you know, he, he's like the Jack Reacher. He's like the badass cop that solves all of these crimes and all this stuff. And like, this is the definition of like a tentful Hit pole action movie explosions, fight sequences, gunfire, all the things. So this is textbook um, tent pole explosions craziness. Um, but I loved it though. I it was one of those that I always used to watch with my grandpa. Um, oh yeah, he was a big Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. So that one, Commando, and a couple of others. I probably shouldn't have been watching last. Our <laughs> Total Recall, Third Titty. Um, <laughs> and I mean, you know, it was it was just a fun time. So it goes back to those memories. But yeah, number four for me, Last Action Hero. There you go. There you go. The Happening. My number four is The Happening, okay? And I'm just going to tell you why I love watching this movie. And it has nothing to do with the movie itself because the movie straight up fucking sucks. It was a total miss by M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan. It was a total miss for Mark Wahlberg. But I enjoy watching this movie every time it's on because every time it's on, I find another mistake. I watch it strictly as a filmmaker now. When I saw it in the theaters... Guys, this is in theater, big screen. You could see the boom mic in a shot, okay? From that moment on, then I was like, oh. So now every time I watch this film, I see something else. And I'm like, what is happening on the set of this film where none of this shit is being seen? How did this ever get past editing to where this is okay? This is the worst continuity film ever ever in the history of ever it's like that's why i enjoy it so much so my number four is the happening and i watch it solely because i like finding the fucking mistakes it's so bad it's so bad but it's enjoyable if you like finding mistakes and thank you for the continuity people and the amazing job you guys do that's all i'm gonna say and whoever was on that one Maybe you're not in continuity anymore. <laughs> Let's you're hope probably not. not in the industry anymore. <laughs> that's for sure. Oh my goodness. Uh, but I mean, let's be honest. M Night Shyamalan never really hits. That's yeah, I, I mean, but, you know, you know, you know. I, I, just, I can't. I can't. Um, number three for me goes to <laughs> Joe Dirt. This one is a cult classic, but I mean, it's it's bad. You go back and watch it, and the comedy is so cringy like everything about it is just so fucking stupid um i mean I, I really feel like there are people like this in the world yeah. who are just hillbilly redneck just going through life like all this shit i mean what the the fucking he had an asteroid that turned out to just be fucking a whole big ball of shit yeah and then he had the the rocket that he thought was a big bomb that was a tube of shit <laughs> and then he like couldn't get as hard because he found out the girl that he was banging wasn't his sister yeah so he had to go back to thinking it was his sister yeah it's so just... this is the definition of a hillbilly classic i guess you could say um it's definitely david spade portrays the role perfectly i think maybe his one of his like biggest roles or most memorable roles um, but yeah, man, Joe Dirt, it's not good, but it's not <laughs> bad, I guess, yeah. but it's not good. Yeah. So, there it is. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> my, my number three, again, it's just, it's, I refer to it as the poor man's Olympus has fallen. Uh, <laughs> my number three is White House Down. It's basically yeah. a straight up ripoff of Olympus has fallen starring Jamie Foxx and Channing Tatum. Um, but it, it's 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 
It's bad. It's nowhere near the quality of Gerard Butler's movies. It's just not. And But the dynamic between Channing and Jamie is hilarious. And so it, it's worth the watch for that. It's a bad movie. It's a bad attempt to, to, to basically knock off Olympus Has Fallen. But their dynamic makes it worth watching every time i see it on i'm just like no no it's funny as shit i'm gonna keep watching this right that so so is it a good movie no no if you want to watch a movie about you know that kind of shit watch olympus has fallen but if you want to watch an entertaining movie about trying to save the president after spies take down the white house watch that one white house down because it's bad but it's it's entertaining my number three white house down you actually uh, sparked a different one for me that I didn't put on the list, but <laughs> it's not good, but it's not, I think, uh, yeah. So, Triple X, State of the Union. This is a uh, little Ice Cube. Yes. People did not yes, like this no, one at all, and no. I mean, it, I, I enjoyed it. I was a kid when I watched it, so I really did. But, I mean, you had Ice Cube, William Defoe, Samuel L. Jackson. I thought it was good, but now when I go back and watch it, I'm like, Rrr, Yeah, Rrr, no, but, no. Uh, um, my original number two, though, goes to Van Helsing. Oh, People hate on this movie. I know. Movie. Why? And I mean, it's actually really good. It is. And I mean, it's it's right before CGI really got good. And I think that's probably why. But I mean, I think the writing is pretty decent. And yeah. I mean, the CGI is the best that it can be. Um, and I mean, I, I mean, I love Hugh Jackman. And I mean, let's be honest about it. The three vampire ladies are hot as shit. Um, so I just, you know, I, I love that medieval lore, though, hunting monsters type of thing. So Van Helsing was honestly really good. I remember going to go see this in theaters. Probably what I should shouldn't have. But, you know, my dad was always taking me to rated R shit when I shouldn't have. Um, but it was really good. I liked it. Um, still, I, I'll watch this today and have no problems with it. Yeah. Um, I wish they would do another one for sure. But number two for me, Van Helsing. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, hot as shit. Uh, my, yeah. <laughs> my number two, and I'm just going to say it straight out, it's bad. It is a bad <laughs> movie. Okay? It shouldn't have been. It had Richard Pryor. The premise was good. It was. It seemed like it was going to be a good one. It was not. It just failed on every level except for one scene. One scene. And this is why I will relentlessly watch it every time it is on. And I will sit through the total shit show that it is until this scene. I'm talking about Superman 3. And anybody who's with me on this knows... The scene that I'm talking about is when the crazy tar fucked up kryptonite fucks with Clark. And it's basically the first kind of sort of time we see a bizarro-esque. But anyway, this dark, nasty Superman comes out of basically Clark. And they have this epic battle scene of Clark Kent fighting this nasty drunk dirty pissed off superman and the battle back and forth with them the scene where he's initially the bad superman just sitting at the bar and he's fucking pissed and he's just using his powers like his super strength and fucking plucking peanuts and smashing bottles with the peanuts and when somebody says something to him he burns the fucking mirror with the heat vision and shit and he's like fucking pissed off and then you know Clark comes out and they fucking have this epic battle scene in like this junkyard or whatever. But that scene <laughs> is why I love this movie. I will watch it throughout just to get to that scene. Now, I'll be honest. After that scene's over, I'm fucking done. I'm like, move on to whatever else I want to watch. But I will sit there and wait for that scene to come because I love that scene. And had they done the whole film with the effort that they put into that scene... Superman 3 would have worked, I think. But, but, but they didn't, and we ended up with Superman 4, The Quest of Peace, and the end of Christopher Reeve as Superman. Because it just continuously went downhill after that. But anyway, <laughs> check out. And I don't know. If you don't want to watch the film, because like I said, it's really fucking bad, YouTube the, the fight scene or something. Because it, it's awesome. But I, w I wouldn't recommend sitting through the whole film. It's just Superman 3. Superman 3, my number That's two. That's funny. Number one for me is Too Fast, Too Furious. Oh, my goodness. I think I really enjoyed this one because, honestly, Paul Walker is, 
I think should have been the face of the franchise. Like this man is a badass, and I felt like his dynamic with Tyrese and Ludacris was like better than Paul Walker and Vin Diesel's um, dynamic. And I just feel like you know if they would have kept Paul Walker at the, at the helm of this franchise, it just would have turned out better, and it would have been so polarizing. Um, and I mean, there's this scene at the very end where it's they're trying to evade the police and all of these cars just come out of the garage. And it was such an epic scene. And yeah. I mean, I could only imagine what that was like to shoot being a filmmaker now. So, I mean, yeah, it was just freaking epic. Number one for me is Too Fast, Too Furious. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And pardon the pun. But yeah, after Paul Walker, this franchise kind of fell off the tracks. It, it just did. Yeah. It just was not the same. Uh, I'm right there with you. Uh, okay. I know I'm going to get heat for this, and I know it's coming, and, and light up the comments underneath. I don't give a shit. Let me hear it. My number one, and I, I, I'm i going to say it, it's a god-awful movie. It is so bad. There was no CGI. This thing is a, either a puppet or somebody in a suit or animatronic, like, robot thing. I don't even know how they fucking did it. But, and you, oh, here's the thing. Steven Spielberg, George Lucas. You think, fuck yeah, this is going to be great. This can't miss. And yet, it's so fucking bad. I am talking about Howard the Duck. Yes, Marvel's mm. beloved Howard the Duck. Whew. This thing, if you are a true aficionado, a true comic book nerd, a true Marvel Excelsior... Yeah, it, it 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 fucking sucked. But if you are a product of the 80s, born in the 70s, raised in the 80s, and you are an 80s person, you fucking love this movie as much as I do. And there's one reason. And her name is Leah Thompson. <laughs> That's all you have to say. I fucking love Leah Thompson. Everybody did in the 80s. I still kind of love her now. But she is just beautiful in this film. Hot as shit. Fucking just bouncing around in her little panties with this duck. Like just, but whatever. It's Leah Thompson in little panties with like her duck. And I just, I watch it. I I fucking love this movie. It just brings back everything I loved about the 80s. And typically after I watch Howard the Duck, I'll go watch Back to the Future. I'll go I'll go and watch all the Leah Thompson movies from the 80s because it's just it makes you want to. Um so bring the hate. I don't care. Yes, I know it's a fucking awful movie. I know it sucks, but I still like it because that I'm just being honest. I am speaking why I like it and I will hold to it. Thank you, Leah Thompson, for being so fucking awesome in the 80s and for just making people watch this film anyway. <laughs> Howard the Duck. It just There it is, my number one. Oh, my goodness. Well, we want to know, what is your <laughs> favorite bad film that you just love watching? Please be sure to comment below in the YouTube comment section. Add us on X or Threads or Instagram, any of the places. We love the Any of the places. Please be sure to do so.